Welcome to today's Research Business Daily Report with a perspective about agnostic mobile research from the esteemed Ray Pointer and then a penetrating look at what needs to be contemplated in today's whirlwind media research climate. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Nuance offering its clients multi-language verbatim coding services so they can quantify the meaning of open-ended answers. Nuance, a decision analyst company. It's not very hard to find a new profound point of view from Ray Pointer, and this week he figuratively let his hair down about agnostic mobile research. First, he alluded to estimations about one-third of people who take online surveys attempting to do so using their mobile device. That helped put into context why the phrase device agnostic has come to the fore, because it helps account for attempted research that's forwarded to smartphones, tablets, and phablets. The device agnostic world has been divvied already into four segments, mobile possible, mobile friendly, truly agnostic, and mobile only. And Pointer estimates more than 90% of online research should be and needs to be device agnostic. Panel companies' output, he revealed, may be only 5 to 10 percent device agnostic. And the vast majority of online surveys are either mobile impossible right now, Ray says, or at best, mobile possible. Moving on, you simply cannot find a better versed media research executive or consultant than Barbara Leftline, who runs Leftline Associates Market Research. And we were given the opportunity to pick her brain about what's really most important right now if you want to stay on top of changes in media research which she told us are ongoing and incredibly frequent is studying the impact of the disruption in, in media consumption in terms of the new platforms and devices that consumers now have available to them are you talking just about the, the basic networks or does it go way beyond that Oh, yeah. This goes all content providers. So we're looking at cable networks in particular and, and, and television networks. It's really about how you can take your information and distribute it in new ways. Mm -hmm. Is the market changing that much that it needs to be watched on an almost continuous basis? Oh, for sure. I think it needs to be watched monthly. Why? Well, I mean, what's going on that's so evolutionary or so revolutionary in those time frames? New apps are being uh, developed um, all the time, and uh, the consumers are finding it. And it's really, you know, chasing those consumers to find out, you know, what's working, what they're doing, and then trying to predict, you know, the adoption of those uh, behaviors over time. Are there particular um, sectors? within the viewing population that need to be tracked more closely than others? I think so. I think that certainly younger consumers, um, teenagers, for example, um, it is a really good group to, uh, to study because we can see from their behaviors, you know, what might uh, impact the population, you know, five, ten years from now. Hmm. And when you talk about t teenagers, what kind of age group are you specifically zeroed in on? I'm looking at high school students. Um, I also think um, uh, that African Americans is also a really great group to uh, research because of their activity in social media. What about Hispanics? Hispanics as well. Um, uh, you know, there's certainly 14 or so percent of the population, and um, it, it just becomes, from a research perspective, a little bit more difficult to track because of translations and so on. Yeah, but that means you look at them for different reasons, right? Yeah, uh, you look at them for different reasons. Um, uh, from a television perspective, though, we're looking, you know, there are issues of acculturation and language, right? So language of the programming content. Um, so if we're looking at general population, uh, it would be a culture, uh, uh, acculturated um, Hispanics. Is the idea to track, let's say, the 14 or 15-year-old and then to continue to to follow them as they get older? Uh, I think that would be interesting, but I think that actually much like you do, I don't think a longitudinal study necessarily is the way to go. That might be nice for academia, but I think for, for companies that need to be nimble right now, I think you want to refresh your look on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. How much damage is being done uh, to television advertising as a result 
uh, of all these changes that you say need to be tracked and oh. accounted for? Yeah, huge, huge, huge. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've seen it from a lot of the research that we've done that the consumers are really very proactive in terms of avoiding advertising. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me as if the answers are not necessarily out there if you're sitting in charge of research at any of the networks or any of the major cable companies, that this something really is changing so much uh, and with such uh, speed uh, and with such frequency uh, that there are no really customer cookie cutter type answers. Is that the case? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you have to, you know, as we were saying, look at this on a continuing basis. Um, you have to be very specific, though, in your questions and what, you know, how you want to go about your research, you know, which target group, what content you're talking about, how that content is consumed. You know, all of those aspects need to be considered. So uh, if... Is it is it the cable networks that are so focused on the teenage and the young audience? Are they the ones that are leading the way and have the greatest grasp of what's going on out there? Uh, n not necessarily. I think that um, I think that studying these younger viewers is important if you want to predict where the market is going. Um, in order to understand though what one needs to do today. There are other avenues uh, apart from studying what teenagers are doing. It depends on what your research objectives are. Mm -hmm. And whatever you're able to discern, if you are a major cable network, again, targeted on teenagers, is that information directly usable by the major television networks, the CBSs, the ABCs, et cetera? For sure. I, you know, the point is to really find out how one can make decisions where to place your bets in this in this marketplace right now? You have to be really careful about how you're going to, you know, you could you could end up like an Aereo and and flop. So you know, placing your bets, decision modeling is really key. Mm, okay, last question: um, Is tracking uh, following the, the younger audience is that requiring the industry to come up with and use different tools and techniques than we might have ordinarily? Yes, uh, I think so. I, uh, you know, again, uh, even with older consumers too, you know, the consumers are good to evaluate. You have to use new techniques in order to discern what is happening with, with teenagers to, in particular. Um, and, you know, we, we've been pretty successful in creating these um, group dynamics and activities and ideation kinds of sessions, um, in addition to just tracking, you know, typical behaviors. Uh, in order to really find out what the attitudes are beyond just measuring, you know, behavior. Our thanks to Barbara, whose email address, if you'd like to get in touch, is bleftline at leftline.com. That is your Research Business Daily Report. We've been sponsored by Nuance, offering multi-language verbatim coding services to help companies quantify the meaning of open-ended answers. Nuance, a decision analyst company, has helped us by creating a link so that you can find out more about their service. And that link is www.nuancecoding.com. Trust me, check it out. Have a great research day and after what we hope is a profitable research week for each and every one of you. We hope you'll enjoy the weekend and that we'll see you back here on Monday.